Hi everybody, happy Monday. I am excited to be with you to do a read aloud. Last week we talked about some of our favorite Jewish foods and some of us said we loved challah and some of us said that we really loved noodle kugel and some of us loved hamantaschen. Well, today we are going to read about a different kind of Jewish food and then Emmy and Mavis are gonna help me try to make them. First, we're gonna read our story and it's called The Knish War on Rivington Street and it's by Joanne Oppenheim, illustrated by John Davis. Mama and Papa worked hard every day, but then everything changed. Oi vey, Mama sighed. Famous, said Papa, who ever heard of her? Fried, Mama sighed, who ever heard of fried knishes? So what they're seeing is there's a sign on the storefront and it says, buy Miss, Mrs. Tish's famous fried knishes, only four cents. Right away, Benny ran across the street to see for himself. There they go, I'm gonna buy some knishes. You ever had a knish? Papa, mama, Benny shouted, they don't look like knishes. For four cents, they must be it pitsky little knishes, right, Benny? No, Mama, not so little. But Mrs. Tish's knishes are square. Square, Papa laughed. Who wants a square knishes? Don't laugh, Mama sighed. For four cents, they could put us out of business. Nobody is putting us out of business, said Papa. We were here first. Oh, so they also sell knishes on Rivington Street. By afternoon, a big new sign went up and Papa's price went down. Right away, Mr. Tish took off another penny and changed the sign in his window. Oh, now they're both charging three cents instead of four cents. Three cents, Mama worried. We can't keep dropping prices. Our profits will fly out the window. So we'll put up screens, Papa joked. Better yet, I'll close the windows. It's no laughing matter. I know, I know, Papa agreed. He was worried too, so he sent Benny outside to drum up some business. When Mr. Tish saw Benny, he sent his son Solly out with a sign too. So there's Solly and Benny and they have signs that say delicious baked knishes and old world taste, new world flavor. They're trying to get people to eat their knishes. Sally and Benny marched up and down Rivington Street. Now crowds came to both knisheries, but Papa was miserable. That thief Tish, he's stealing our customers. So what can we do, asked Mama. A raffle, said Papa. We'll give a coupon with every knish for a raffle. Benny, he said, you'll make for me a sign. Write what I say. So what did Mr. Tish do? Of course, he ran a raffle too. Instead of one coupon, he gave two. The raffles worked. People started buying more knishes to get coupons to win dishes. But Papa was still worried about losing customers. So he bought a fancy schmancy piano that Benny played. When Mr. Tish saw this, he bought a new fangled Victrola with a wind up crank. Solly's job was turning the crank to make music. Both Papa and Mr. Tish lowered their prices again. They really want people to come to their restaurants, so they're finding all new ways to invite customers to buy their knishes. Papa, Mama worried, you're selling the knishes for next to nothing. Don't worry, he told her, look at all the people. Their knishery was buzzing with customers. They were busier than ever. In fact, they were so busy, Papa decided they had to expand. He made his knishery twice as big, and to celebrate, he hired a big, brassy oompapa band. So naturally, Mr. Tish made his knishery even bigger and fancier. And for the grand opening, he hired an all-ladies orchestra. Such ritzy-pitsy music had never been heard before on Rivington Street. Look at all the people outside of their knisheries. Looks like they're kind of having fun, doesn't it? Every night, the orchestra was fiddling and the oompapa band was oompapani. 
On every corner, newsboys were shouting, Knish war on Rivington Street, heats up. Quiet, shouted people in the tenements upstairs. Enough already, we're trying to sleep. Call the police, a neighbor yelled from an upstairs window. So many customers, Papa, said Benny. Maybe two knisheries are better than one. But Papa wasn't listening. Benny, take the tray. You'll give them a little snick snack, a sample. Benny was mobbed with people shoving and shouting. One to a customer, he yelled. People outside of Tish's came running to get a free knish. Wait, Solly shouted. We'll have samples right away. Oh, they're still competing for who's going to come to their knishery. Soon police wagons came racing down the street and to everyone's surprise, his honor, the mayor of New York City was right behind them. Rivington Street suddenly became quiet. Ladies, gentlemen, the mayor greeted the crowd, waving his shiny top hat. Please, will someone explain what's going on here? At first, no one spoke. Then, in a small voice, Benny said, Knishes. What's that? asked the mayor. Knishes, Mr. Mayor, Papa said. Take a taste. You'll see. My Molly's flaky baked round knishes are the best. Don't make me laugh, Mr. Tish shoved past Papa. Try Mrs. Tish's crispy fried square knishes. Then you'll know what bliss is. The mayor looked at Benny and Solly. A war over Knishes? The boys nodded their heads. Please, said the mayor, I'll be at the decider. I'll taste them and settle this fight. His honor began tasting round ones, square ones, Knishes with kasha, cheese, and potatoes. He tried them fried, he tried them baked. Everyone watched and worried. Mama wrung her hands. Whose knishes would he choose? Look at him really thinking about which one he likes better, the round or the square. It's impossible, said the mayor. What, said Papa. My friends, it's like trying to choose between the sun and the moon. We need both, don't we? It's the same with knishes. There's no such thing as one best. Papa and Mr. Tish did not look convinced. Taste, the mayor insisted both families try each other's knishes. Oh, I wonder what each family is going to think. Not bad, said Mr. Tish. Not like my Molly's, but tasty, Papa had to admit. Solly and Benny agreed. So did their mamas. Oh, once they tried each other's knishes, they realized they were both really tasty. Maybe, said Papa, maybe we could both make a living selling knishes. Of course, his honor agreed. In this great city, we need more than one knishery. And so that very day, the mayor ordered a banner. Rip well, here's the banner. It says Rivington Street, the knish capital of the world. It went from one side of the street to the other and declared Rivington Street, the Knish capital of the world. And that is how the Knish War ended. So once they were willing to try each other's Knishes, then they realized they were both really delicious, both a little bit different, but there was a place for both of them. Well, almost. Oh, look at this. Here's a new child who has knish on wheels. Somebody else is going to try to sell some knishes on Rivington Street. So friends, in the back of this book, there are two different recipes, one for Molly's knishes and one for Mrs. Tish's knishes. And I'm gonna share those recipes with you. Okay guys, we are going to get ready to make our knishes. And I'm gonna do the first part myself. Um, so I'm gonna mix up the ingredients for our dough. So I'm gonna start with two eggs in a bowl. And with those eggs, we're going to mix together some salt, some oil, and some baking powder. And once we mix all of those up, 
we're gonna add in our flour until we make a sticky dough. And then that dough needs to be kneaded for about 10 minutes. So that could be a good thing for your kiddos to do um, if they are feeling like they want to get some energy out kneading dough. Or it could be something that the adult does in advance. That's what I'm gonna do today. So knead that dough up for 10 minutes, and then we're gonna set it aside for an hour because it needs to rest. And then while our dough is resting, we can kind of get set up with whatever fillings we're gonna use for our knish. We are gonna make a dairy knish that's gonna be a mixture of, um, of some sour cream and some cream cheese and some chives from our garden, and that's what's going to go into our filling. So Emmy and Mavis are gonna come back in about an hour and 10 minutes from now. We're gonna roll out our dough, we're gonna shape it into circles, and then we're gonna add our filling, and they're gonna help me make the filling part. Um, and then you'll see what we do next. Hi. Hello, we are back, and I have my trusty assistant, Amelia. <laughs> and what did you do before you came to the kitchen with your hands? I washed them. She washed them really well. And I opened up the dough that we have been letting rest for an hour. And Emmy is working really hard. What are you doing with the dough? Rolling it. She's rolling it out. I'm going to see if I can show it to you on the camera. See, it's getting nice and flat. She's been really working. And then our next step is that we are going to take the dough and cut it into circles. And we didn't have a... That's going to be fun. I think it is going to be fun. We didn't have a circular cookie cutter, but we did have these circular glasses. So we are going to use these glasses to make our circle. And we're going to kind of use them as a cookie cutter. Would you oh. like to give it a try? Yeah. All right. So you're going to push down gently from the top mm -hmm. to make your circle. And then in this bowl... We mix together cream cheese, sour cream, some chives from our garden, um, a little salt, a little white pepper, and a beaten egg. And what we're going to do once we cut out these circles that Amelia is using all of her muscle strength for, we're going to put about a tablespoon of the filling into it, and then we're going to curl up the tops to form the knish. And then we are going to make a baked version of the knish, so sort of like um, what what Molly did in her knishery. Um, and then we're gonna see how they taste. And I think hopefully Mavis and Emmy will get to taste a knish, but Emmy's the maker today. All right, should we get to knish making? Yeah. All right, here we go. Ready? All right, we're back with Emmy and she is gonna demonstrate how to fill the knish. I take a scoop of this and I put it right in the middle. Wait, here. <laughs> that might be enough. Yeah. Like that. And then what do you do? I fold it mm -hmm. like this and put it along those corners. Yeah, you just pinch along the edges. It almost looks like a pierogi. Yeah. What? Yeah. What's that? A pierogi? Yeah. Are you from Pittsburgh? Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to eat more pierogies around here. All right, so... Some things that we're learning yeah. is you don't want to overfill no. with the filling. And sometimes it's helpful if the adult goes back and squishes along the edges just to make sure they're really secure. Are you having fun making these? Yeah. Oh, good. Um, some more. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're back with Emmy and Mavis, and the kish are out of the oven. Emmy, do you want to tell Mavis how you made them? We want to eat them. <laughs> All right, you just want a taste test? Yeah, yeah All before right. we tell you. Okay. Yummy. What do you think, Em? Mm. We got the bread into the filling to taste the cheese. Mm -hmm. mm. So you like them? Emmy did a good job? Mm hmm. Emmy, what do you think? I don't know. Not your favorite Jewish food? Yeah. No. Well, friends, we've had a lot of fun making knish and reading about the knish war on Rivington Street. And Mavis is going to steal my knish. Yeah, I already invited <laughs> it. <laughs> I hope you have a really fun week, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye, friends. Bye. Bye. Oh!